Now here we have a discrete time system with where it says there's a system with an impulse response hn which equals un and un is the step function. So let's just quickly plot what that is. It's a it's in discrete time, so we only have integer values on the horizontal axis, and it's a function which is zero for negative integers and one from zero onwards. That's the step function. And in this case, our impulse response of our system is the step function. So you give it an impulse, the system turns on and stays on. And we're saying instead of giving it just an impulse, we're going to put this input in, where xn equals 3 delta n minus 2 minus 2 delta n minus 4. And the question is, plot the output. Now you could write down the formula for convolution, and you could work out the, through mathematics the convolution of un with xn, or you could think straight in terms of the plots, and that's what we're going to do here. Okay, so let's really to show that we really understand what convolution is. Uh, and in discrete time, uh, I think it's uh, hopefully straightforward. So what this tells us is that we've got an impulse at n equals two. This is delta n minus two, which means it's a delta function shifted to n equals two. And it's of height three. And then we've got a negative impulse happening at time n equals four. And by the definition of impulse response, this is the way the system responds to an impulse. So we know that if there's no input to our system before n equals 2, then the output of our system is going to be 0 for all of the times, for all the values of n, which are less than 2. So all of these are 0. So this is our output, which equals xn convolved with hn. So it's, we know that it's zero for all values less than two. So at two, an impulse happens of height three, which means the impulse response is going to come out of our system. So out of our system, starting at time two, we're going to have three times the step function. And so at two, that's the case, and at three, that's the case. And if there was no more impulses, if that was just our input was just three times delta n minus two, this would be this would continue on at the height of three forevermore. But our input has a negative delta function occurring at time n equals four. So at n equals four, we've got negative two times this response. So this response is going to happen negative times two starting at time n equals 4, or shifted to time n equals 4. So we take this, we shift it to n equals 4, we invert it, multiply by 2, and we're going to be adding it to this one, which is multiplied by 3. So we've got 3, and this would carry on if it wasn't for this other impulse. The other impulse is negative, so it, it subtracts from this, and it's subtracting by 2, so it takes us down to a height of 1. And forevermore, that is going to be the case because this impulse response keeps going from both of these impulses. So if after n equals 4, forevermore, it's this the response from this delta, which is this times 3, minus the response from this delta, which is a minus of this times 2, which leaves us plus 1.